see if perhaps he could find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Now, I was praying one day and I said, Lord, now you know, God, you're not very fair to be telling a fig tree off that you have already created not to have fruit at this season. Are you all following? I'm going somewhere with this. And the Lord said, I am God. Everything operates when I want something in season and out of season. And if you're going to be a minister of the gospel, you better be ready in season and out of season. You better be prayed up because you never know when you're going to be confronted with the devil. You better be prayed up at all times. You never know when there's going to be a wreck on the side of the road and you have to go and you lead them to the Lord and you pray immediately in their head that was cracked. I'm going to share a story that happened a long, long time ago in a church service, which it shouldn't have happened, but anyway, uh, shouldn't have happened, but anyway. I don't want to scare anybody. I probably shouldn't share that story. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, you, you got cushioned chairs here, so I can tell the story. So I'm praying for people, praying for people, praying for people, and the catchers were not catching up with me. And so now when I pray for people, I make sure there's somebody behind them, okay? But anyway, this person went, shroom. And I'm still praying for people, praying for people, and praying for people because I don't know what's happened. I have a long prayer line, so I'm praying for people. And all of a sudden, right in the middle of the prayer line, the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, go to the back room back there. See that door? There was three or four doors at the back of the church, nice-sized church. He said, go in that door room right now. So I left people up here, because okay, what are you going to do? you got a prayer line, so, you know. I said, okay, everybody, keep your hands up, pray, pray, I'll be right back. So I run, 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 and I run into the prayer room, and the man had split his head open. And, uh, and I just walked in there because I don't have a lot of time. I put my hand on his head. I said, call you late. See, seal, be healed in Jesus' name. Run back out and pray for everybody. But that pastor was a little worried, so he took him to the hospital. When, the hospital. when they got to the hospital, they couldn't even find a trace of blood nor a crack. So we need to be ready in season and out of season because you never know when God's going to use you. And if you're going to be ministers, then you have to be prepared. You need to have your devotion time. You need to have faith and all the things we've been teaching since we started a few days ago. So now uh, it be in season and out of season. So they heard it. So it says now in verse 20. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembered and said, Rabbi, look the fig tree which you have cursed is withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says, it shall be done, whatever he says. Now, I'm going to show you an example, and I wish I had something to show the example, but I'm pretty good at, at having visuals, okay? So I'm... I'm, I'm I think I am anyway. Okay, so everybody look up here at me. Okay, you all looking at me? Okay, there's a beautiful rose bush. You see it right here? You all see the rose bush? Can you see the rose bush? What color roses? God, you got it. Okay, so now you got it. Okay, so I, they could have been yellow, but red's the color they are. That's okay, these are red. Okay, so you have to, you have to get with me, red. Okay, so now watch. This is very important, what I'm going to sh share with you. Very, very important. So I go over there, and I take a little tweezer, and I cut that flower. Now I have, I have a rose. You see it? What color is it? Okay, it looks beautiful. And I put it in a vase or vase or whatever you want to call them, and you put it in there with water. And you might put an aspen in there if you want it to live long. But it looks alive. Is it alive? But it looks alive. Does it look alive? It's going to look alive for maybe three, four days, five days, it'll start weathering. You all follow what I'm saying? But it looks alive. So what I'm saying to you, the minute we pray for you tonight, cancer is dead, even if you still see it. Are you following me? You don't go by what you see. You go by the word of God 
the minute we pray and tell the cancer, the back problem, or whatever the disease is. So when you're praying for people, because you're going to have your opportunity to pray tonight, I'm going to pray for the anointing on you, and you're going to be praying for the sick. So when you pray, you've got to believe that what you say is done. And you that are being prayed for, you need to stop having doubt. Now, you're going to pray for people that do have doubt. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example. I was in a car wreck when I was 17 years old. Some, anyway, I shouldn't tell the whole story. But anyway, I'm, I'm a goody, goody girl, but I was a, wall, a wallflower. Okay, so I was ugly in school, and for some reason, when I'd go places, nobody ever, you know, they'd ask everybody else to dance, and I'd be sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. So, like, you know, it's like, is anything going to ever happen? And I'm at, a, I was a, a first, first month of my senior year. So this football player, I mean, can you believe one of them with the leather jacket? I mean, the, the letter, you know, comes and asks me, if I would like to dance. And I'm like, about fell over. I just, but like, wow, somebody noticed me. So I danced a few dances, and then he said, you want to go for a ride? you take me back to the dance right now and he tried again and I finally told him what off so he decided I uh, so I got out of the car so I that's it I got out of the car and said I'm walking back to the dance but I was evidently walking the wrong way because I have no idea where in the country I am and he finally drove up with his hot rod car and said get in you don't even know where you're going and then he hit the gas pedal and it went mm, mm, 80 90 100 and then the, bury, the needle was buried. And all of a sudden I looked forward and there was a roadblock and the road was out. The next thing I knew I was in the hospital. I broke my back, cracked my head, my spinal cord was broken. I was in the hospital my whole senior year. The doctor said I would never have children. I had to wear a body brace for about a year and a half, two years. And my back was really in bad shape. So now I'm a sinner and I'm just doing my thing, okay? But this baby neighbor of mine is, is determined, determined to get me saved, okay? So she does, and I got the demons cast out of me, which many of you heard the other night, so I'm not going to go into my testimony. You can go online and get it. I think there's one left on the book table, I think. Anyway, so she tells me, and I am in such bad shape, and I get another wreck and another wreck, and another wreck, and now I'm in my 20s. My back is so far gone that I'm in a, seeing a chiropractor, and I'm going to be in a wheelchair for life. So she convinces me to go with her to some Holy Ghost crazy meeting where they speak in tongues and all this crazy stuff. And she says, well, will you go with me? And I said, well... I can't go with you. I, I bear, my back is so bad, I have to crawl across the floor to get to the bathrooms. I couldn't even walk. I couldn't cook. I couldn't do anything. So she said, that's okay. And when I would go to the doctors, they'd put me in the back on a, on a mat so I could lay down flat. She said, I'll get the back of my social wagon and put a mattress in there and take you. I said, all right. She was persistent. So I went with her. But I, was resist I didn't really want to be there. So I get in there early before the house, it was a house meeting. And so I went and sat on a harder chair because it's easier for me to sit on a hard chair. And the guy that's in charge of the house meeting comes over to me and says, could I pray for you? Well, you know, I have a neck brace because from the second accident, I have a back brace. I mean, he didn't need three dreams and a vision to see that there was something wrong with me, okay? So I have this neck brace and he said, can I pray for you? And he, he asked a couple of times and I went, finally, I was like, well, if you absolutely have to, go ahead. <laughs> that was about the attitude. Okay, so then I, I said, okay, 
but he, he, he tells the whole group that's maybe 12, 13 people there, come on over here, we're all going to lay hands on her. And I'm like, I didn't, so, or, you know, I'm like, ah, what is going on? And so they put hands on me, and I was getting mad at him while he laid hands because his hands were kind of heavy, and it was pushing, and it was hurting. So I was like, this guy's a fruitcake. And he just said, in Jesus' name, I command you to be healed. No, not a long prayer. They all went hallelujah and everything. How do you feel? And I went, I said, well, are you happy now that you prayed for me? Okay, I'll let you pray for me. So that's it. Don't bother me. That's my attitude. You don't think I was that way. I can be that way still. <laughs> you come on a mission trip with me and you don't do the right thing, you're going to hear about it. I'm in charge of you. If you come on a mission trip and you do something, you're going to see this other side of Joan. Because I don't want you killed in some mission trip. You're going to do what's right or I'm going to, hey, don't do that. So I have to see the chiropractor every week. And the chiropractor told me I would be in a wheelchair probably within six months because it was getting so bad. So I, I don't think nothing of it, think they're fruitcakes. And I go Friday. And every Friday, because it's getting worse and worse and I can hardly walk, um, he takes x-rays. And so I t they did a set of x-rays. And then I, they said, you can go back and put your clothes back on because you have to, you know, it was a full body x-ray. And so then they came and said, well, you have, to, you have to get undressed again because we have to do a second x-ray. And I thought, well, why do you have to do a sec second x-ray? Why didn't you get it right the first time, you know? I'm just kind of crabby. <laughs> and so anyway, so now I'm in he's the, the doctor's office, and he says, I want to show you something. He said, this is your x-rays that we've been looking at for all this year and a half that we've been treating you. You see here, it's broken. You see here, you see the crack here on your fifth lumbar, the fourth lumbar, the sixth lumbar. You see this? And when he said, now, you see this one? I said, mm-hmm. He said, this one's yours too. We just took it. I had to take two. According to this x-ray, your back has never been broken, ever. And the doctor said, the, not me, an unsaved doctor says, it's like a miracle. And I went, wait a minute. You see, a couple of nights ago, I went to this kooky meeting. And all these people said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And I didn't realize, come to think of it, I have been each day feeling better and better. I haven't had a backache since. <laughs> Nothing. So what am I saying? You don't see it. So when you get prayed for tonight, or you pray for somebody tonight, don't you get negative with your mouth. Oh, it, nothing happened. God didn't do nothing. Because you don't know. Because the lepers, remember, 10 lepers came to him and wanted to be prayed for. And they, they didn't see it. They didn't see it. But when they were starting to travel, all of a sudden the leprosy left. And only one came back to worship Jesus. So that what happens when you want to keep your healing, you need to know how to fight the devil and tell the devil where to fly a kite and get him under your feet. And keep them under your feet. We did some talking about spiritual warfare. And then you have to, because what happens is God could be sending from the angels in heaven. He's bringing you your healing. You follow? But because you get negative, as soon as you start crumbling and complaining, the angels don't like it. As soon as they hear you complaining, they turn around and go back to heaven following me and there goes your healing and that's why a lot of people get healed in
window hi there how are you and he said i'm the pastor that came to check you out well i just want you to know he never did book me <laughs> what you get word of encouragement um, i received the word of encouragement <laughs> thank you and what i'd like all of you to do right now is to raise your hands and Oh, okay. I would like you all to raise your hands. Raise your hands high. Put your right hand on your heart. This is the word of encouragement that the Lord had gave me. It is from the King James Version. And the first one is 1232. And it reads, Oh. Do not fear little flocks. Yeah. Do not fear little flocks, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. My English is not that good, but I'm going to pronounce the other one is the Philippines, and it's 4 7. I'm so nervous. <laughs> okay. And the peace of God will suppress all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ, media of all the things to come are things, are these things. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Did you receive it? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Did you have more to say? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just heard a couple of things. God is saying uh, climate change in the spirit. There's climate change in the spirit. Uh, right now, he's releasing a new climate, new atmosphere. Woo! Uh, for us, for the people of God, it's not just a small thing. It's going to cover the whole face of the earth. And he says, it's time for you to walk on water and to do the things uh, you can't do on your own unless God is with you. Unless God is with you. Yes. And let your faith uh, outrun your fears. Just like this, the pastor said here. Are you a pastor? No, uh, that's okay. I'm a minister. Was that good? That's good. All right. Oh, Lord, help me. Okay, so I, when I closed my eyes and I was praying in the spirit, I saw like a construction site and I saw like the plans for a large building and I'm going to step out. I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying it was some, it, like there's a builder or a contractor here. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, pray a blessing over this person. Okay. So. Father, we just magnify and glorify your name, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus, that you would bless the work of this man's hands, that you would bless the people that he works with, that you would bless the ground that he is breaking. And Lord, we just say, bring it, Jesus, only the way you can, Lord. And we just give you glory, Jesus. We just give you glory, and we release all of your blessings over him in the name of Jesus. Go, God. <laughs> Extra work, amen, amen, amen. All right, what is your name, sir? Pat, I know you, Pat. All right. Oh, Kurasa, Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you would bless Pat. 
Lord God, I thank you that you would bless the work that he does with his hands and everything that he puts his hands to, Lord God. I thank you that you bless the ground where he steps and he takes the land where he goes, like Joshua. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you are just bringing it for him in such a way that things will never be the same for him, Lord God. We say, bring it, Jesus. Bless him, bless him, bless him, and bless him again. In your name, Jesus, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Pastor Dan. <laughs> you should be praying for me. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, wait. Lord, bless him, God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. I, Lord, I thank you that you are blessing the work of his hands, that you are blessing everything that he puts his hands to, Lord God, that you are blessing the people around him, his family, the people that he works with, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that finances are going to come in such a way, in such a way that he's going to know that it's from you, Lord God. And we just say, bring it, Jesus. Bring it, Jesus. Release it to him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Go, God. Oh, one more. Ah. Oh, Lord. What is your name, sir? John. Hi, John. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you're so good. I just thank you, Lord, that you would give John a blessing a blessing that would chase him down, that he would be so overcome by your goodness, Lord God, that he would know that everything that he gets is from you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that your blessings would chase him down and overcome him, Lord God. I thank you that he will testify of your goodness. I thank you, Lord, that you will bless everything that he puts his hands to, Lord God. And I thank you, Jesus, that you will release blessing upon blessing upon blessing in your name, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I also ask, Lord, that you would give him peace. Peace that surpasses all human understanding. That you would just release that to him, to his heart, to his mind, to his body. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give him more. In your name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, I, um, I had a... Um, somebody has like a, a pain, like, or it's actually like a numbness right in here, right? Okay. <laughs> Okay, anybody else? <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, so you've got to get it. It's, it's a numbness. Yeah, right below the shoulder blades. Yeah, and I felt, I actually saw it on, it started on the left side, and then it was also on the, like, moved over into the right side. So, okay. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for healing that back. Thank you for anything that all of those um, nerve endings, that they would go into your plan. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, just touch that back. Touch, touch Mary Jo's back. Heal it. Heal it, Lord, that there would no longer be any problems. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. All right. I was sitting over there, and I felt God's love for these people. Like I haven't felt God's corporate love in a long time. And I heard the Lord saying, he's purging you for a greater harvest. Purging. He's purging you 
for a greater harvest. And the place he needs to start is in your heart. There's many heart hurts here. Many hurts from the past. Many hurts we haven't let go of. Many hurts that we haven't given to God. And God wants to heal our hearts. Because his heart is broken for each and every one of you. And the only way that he can be whole is if you're whole. And so God wants to start in your hearts tonight. He wants you to give him your hurts. He wants to heal physical hearts, but he wants to heal your spiritual heart. He wants to give you a new heart, a cheerful heart, a circumcised heart. And so if you would just take a moment and give him that brokenness, those things you've been hanging on to. God's a big enough God. He's a big enough God. He's a big enough God. He wants you walking out here, leaving it behind with a brand new heart and no more pain. Amen. Because he wants to give you this next harvest. And he said you were not going to remember the former things. Because this what God has given you is everything he promised. He's not a God that can fail you. He's heard your cries. He's seen your tears of the dark night. And he's going to give you tears of joy. What God is bringing upon this earth. And he's using you to do it. And he wants you to be a whole people. And so he wants to start in that field of your heart tonight. Amen. Let it be established out of the mouth of two or three. Remember the other one? Raise your hand. Touch your heart. It's been established. God wants your hearts. And if your heart isn't pure before God, how are we going to have revival? But God has to start with us forgiving, forgetting, and letting go. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Holy Spirit says we keep claiming things that don't belong to us. Backaches don't belong to us. Cancer doesn't belong to us. Rheumatoid arthritis doesn't belong to us, but yet we keep claiming these things and giving the devil the glory when we shouldn't be claiming it because it doesn't belong to us in the first place. Jesus said, by my stripes you are healed. He didn't say you might be healed. He said, by your stripes, I, by my stripes you are healed. The name of Jesus is higher than all names. Name a sickness or any problem. At the mention of that name, they bow, they fall. Amen. Amen. And the Lord called me up here and he said, there's some someone here, you're having problems with your ears and the Lord wants me to wet my fingers and stick them in your ear, whether it be one ear or two ears. If that's you, come on up. Amen. Or maybe would it be better to have you wet your fingers? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I was, okay. Is it all right if I touch your ears? Okay. No, not anointing oil. That's not what God said. Okay? That's okay. Do what you got to do. No. That one over there. Right there. Father, your glory is flowing into her. Your healing power is flowing into her, Father. Father, your anointing power is flowing into her. Father, you're touching her from the soles of her feet to the top of her head. God, whatever this ear problem is, it's gone. She don't claim it, even though the symptoms may be there, God, they're not there because according to your word, she is healed. And we believe that. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand.
I'm going to break on you first. I'm going to break on you first. Turn around so you're facing the people. Turn, turn, try to turn around or sideways. Let's give a praise report. No, you have ear problems? You have your ears? Yeah, one more ear thing. What? Yeah, hold on. what only you can do by your power hallelujah hallelujah lord we thank you we thank you father for doing this according to your word it's done in jesus name hallelujah wait don't go nowhere stay there just go ahead hallelujah I know. I know. Don't go down yet. You got to share a word. That's all I can say. Lord Jesus, it's time for the word that He's hearing. They don't belong to the Lord. God, the enemy's mind is said, Father, that He has His wonderful lady here I know she has a word but the Lord told me to do this right now you know earlier in one of the sessions I talked about blind Bartimaeus and that he put away his robe which was a begging robe it was like a handicapped sticker he couldn't beg on the side of the road with that that cloak but remember when Jesus called him he threw that robe off on the ground because he said I won't ever need it again she came tonight and when she came she told me she threw away her hand and kept that sticker because she knows she's going to be healed now, now, all the way through this body. You will not need this ever again, never, ever again in Jesus' name. You did an action of faith, an action of faith by throwing away your handicapped sticker. And God's touching you, healing you. Receive it, receive it. Re catch her, catch her, catch her in Jesus' name. There it is. Receive it. Now, she has a word she wants to share. Brenda. <laughs> I, I understand. 
<laughs> I can relate. Absolutely. Okay, so when I was asking the Lord who he wants me to pray for, immediately I heard your name. Okay. So I just speak peace, 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 peace to every nerve. Be healed. Restore, 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 restore. Every muscle restored. Every nerve restored. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Peace. Peace in the name, power, and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who came in the flesh. Peace. Oh, glory. Okay, that's it. Ooh. Okay, uh, I'm going to really step out. I've never ever gotten a full birthday before ever <laughs> except for when mine was called out my first time by someone uh so i seen uh so i don't know if it's a birthday or if this date means anything to someone but august 24th 1979 it could be august 24th but i saw 79 after it this is the first time ever i've seen so i felt like god it has to mean something here or online august 24th 79 okay well yeah so uh <laughs> okay so let me tell you what else happened within minutes after that so it might make more sense so i was got a word of knowledge for a barista that i was getting coffee at earlier and then I got lost again. I got lost for hours with the Lord yesterday. <laughs> and so I saw uh, five, 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 four fives in a row on my, uh, and so the Lord just, uh, five means grace, abundant favor and grace. So um, yeah, so actually, let me just ask the Lord for more. So uh, what was your name again? Phyllis, I'm Dawn Phyllis. <laughs> So Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this prayer and into this conversation. I just ask that you would move in power on behalf of her and on behalf of her family, Lord God. I thank you for favor, the favor on her life, Lord. Lord, abundant grace and favor, God. I thank you, Lord, that you highlighted her birthday to me. First time ever. <laughs> and so, Lord, I love that you're so fun. You're a fun God. And Lord, we just thank you for more fun for her, God. We thank you for the grace on her life, God. We thank you that your mercy and grace are new every day. Father, I thank you for favor and grace in every area of her life. Ephesians 3.20, in every area of her life, things that look dead, things that look impossible. I thank you for releasing your resurrection, deutimus power and life to everything that looks dead in her life, everything that looks impossible whether it's relationships, whether it's finances, whether it's, I just feel like every area of your life, I declare breakthrough and recompense, not restoration. He's been speaking to me on the difference between restoration and redemption. So restoration is to restore back to its original, but he is bringing resurrection and redemption. That is, uh, redemption means also deliverance and save. it means your savior, you're delivered. So we just declare sozo over your life that you're healed, delivered, and set free, God. I thank you, Father. Uh, I just thank you for the blessing that she is, God. I thank you that she is a mighty woman of God, that she is your daughter of Zion. She's the descendant of the house, and she has royalty in her DNA and her bloodline, and it's in her inheritance to expect blessings and favor and honor. Lord God, I thank you for restoring honor in her life, God. I thank you um, again for Ephesians 3.20, better than she can ever hope, imagine, or think of beyond her wildest imaginations or dreams. 
specifically, he's been telling me Ephesians 3.20, the Passion Translation. So I would, I, it's kind of like what I just said, <laughs> Lord. But Lord, I just thank you, Father, if there's anything else, Lord God. We just come into alignment with the kingdom of heaven that your will and your way would be done in her life, God. We just come by faith directly to your throne room in heaven, God, and we ask for we ask for your heavenly wisdom, knowledge, and discernment, Lord God, divine appointments, divine connections, and thank you, Lord, for destiny helpers and removing any destiny destroyers in her life, God, any life-sucking spirits that would, um, that would be sucking the life out of her, Lord, I just release your life, release your power, release your deutimous power and resurrection power, korobo se kira makata se more of your glory, Lord, more of your glory, more of your presence, more of your joy. Father, I pray for joy eruptions and explosions wherever she goes, God, that people would bust out into laughter, that they would be set free just by one word, that you would give her tongues of fire, God, tongues of fire. One word, one syllable would set them free, God. Her shadow would begin to set them free, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We soak her in your blood, God. Your blood is speaking on her behalf, Lord Jesus. And we agree with your blood. We say yes. We say yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, that your blood is the most powerful substance in the universe. It runs through her veins and her arteries and pumps through her heart throughout her entire body. God, I thank you. Thank you for bringing forth that word. I have one more lady that wants to say something. When we had our hands on our hearts and our arms lifted up, God said there's somebody here whose heart is so shattered that it feels like there's just shards inside. And he wants to heal you because he is the God that healeth us. He is the God that healeth the brokenhearted. So if that's so, in Jesus' name, just receive it right where you're at. Receive the healing. You have to learn that sometimes God has to lay hands. Other times, you just receive it. You don't always have to have somebody lay hands on you. Yes. Because I'm sure there's several people here that have hurt and even hearts that yes. might have a blocked artery or yes. something wrong with your heart. Anything to do with hearts, just raise your hand up and say, "I receive it." Now just pray for them as a group prayer. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ that these people are healed by your blood. And we thank you. We speak health and healing in all areas, Father, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally of their hearts, Lord. And we thank you that by your precious blood, they are healed in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to talk for a second. She has a word, but I told her to wait on the word. So before I do the word, I want to, I'm really gutsy to do this. Believe me, I'm really gutsy. Okay, first of all, this book is all on healing. By his stripes, we are healed. And we've had several people say that tonight. So this is a book that will help you to know how to heal, how for them to keep their healing, how to have notable miracles, notable miracles, where we've had people's legs grow back out. We had a lady in a tent meeting that had um, hepatitis C and was in a wheelchair. And her, her hepatitis was so bad that she was on a liver transplant. Well, my husband got the word of knowledge to get her, to, at, to, that I was supposed to pray for her. So he came up in the tent and moved the leg things that were on her legs. And I prayed and she didn't come out of the wheelchair. She stood up and danced from one end of the tent to the other end of the tent. A few days later, she went to the University of Berkeley, which is in California, by San Francisco somewhere, and they did some tests on her, and they said, she doesn't need to be on the liver list anymore. Somebody, no, she had, she don't need to be on the liver list anymore. She's got a brand new liver that somebody has put in her body. So if you want to learn to walk in notable miracles, you want to pick this up at the book table, and if you're watching by Facebook or whatever, you can order it online. We have resources at the bookstore. You could also get it 
on Amazon and also on Amazon. All my books can get, you can get them on Amazon and you can download them onto your Kindles too. So I have that book and then I have these two that are really going to help you how to hear God because every single one of us need to hear God. I have it in book form. Like I said, you can get it at our bookstore, but we have tons of them out here right now. And then we have it in audio. So you can get it. If you don't want to read it, you can put it in your car and listen to it and listen to it. These are also at our bookstore and also on Amazon and also here. Now, this is where I said I'm going to be gutsy. I'm, I already told you I might be here till late, late tonight. Pastor, you might need to leave us the key to lock up the church because anyone that picks up either one of these books or has picked up one of the books, if you want me to write in your book, I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to sit over in the corner and I want all of you to be good. That means if I'm over there in the corner, you're not coming over to talk to me. No, no, there's a reason. Because if God tells me to write a prophetic word in your, in your book, then I'll write a prophetic word. But I'm going to let you know something up front. My spelling and my writing is so bad that tomorrow, if you can't figure out the words, which, I mean, I can spell one word five ways, and none of them are anything near what that word is. So if you don't want some scribble and messed up words in your book, don't have me do this. I'll just sign my name. But you'll, they'll all know it's a Joan Pierce book if they see the scribble scribble and they can't figure out the words. And so I want to thank you all for coming. And then I want her to say the word that you got. Amen. Now I want to say something. This is a wonderful church, and I don't want anyone in this church to put your tithe out there in that basket. The tithe belongs in this house. So don't you dare go put a check out there for Joan Pierce, or actually you write it to Channel of Love, and say, well, I'll just split the tithe. No, the tithe belongs to the church. Don't you dare 
And I have learned that if you learn to give and give till it hurts, the windows of heaven get opened up. And I learned, because my husband is a stickler on this. He goes, did you give your tithe? Uh-huh. So we don't tithe 10%. We never have tithed 10%, so I'm going to share a little story as we get ready to wrap this up. When I first got saved, I didn't know anything. I couldn't read the Bible. I didn't know anything about 10%. I was so excited that I got saved and set free of all these demons that I used to get two checks every month. I'd get one check on the first of the month and a check on the 15th of the month, and the check on the 15th of the month was based on my sales. And at that point, it was $800 a month, roughly $800, $900, depending on how much we sold. Well, I was so excited that I got saved at a full gospel men's mini meeting that when I got my second check on the 15th, I didn't ever cash it. I endorsed the back and put it in the offering, not knowing as a Catholic Mormon girl that just got saved, nothing about giving. It was just my heart. And so the next month, that check went from 800 to almost 2,000. And I was like, I don't understand what's happening. So I endorsed that check and put it in, and it doubled. And I endorsed the next one. And within four months of doing it, I was given a $2 million business. And when I got the $2 million business and the big hot, hot shots from the co corporation told me they were going to give me this franchise, they said, okay, after they did that, first of all, I heard at a prayer meeting, I was just a baby Christian, maybe six months at that, where I got my back healed, and I went to this prayer meeting. It was usually Catholics and charismatic Catholics and a lot of people. And uh, so I was so happy that I got prayed for there that one night they were teaching on prayer. And they said, be specific when you pray. And I taught on prayer. This is very important that you hear this. So I was being specific. And now, of course... I'm a new baby Christian, and so a little on the wacko side. So this is my prayer. Lord, I know the planets are going to all come in alignment this next year, and the world's going to blow up. So I would like to own my own company and have my own franchise before the world blows up. Now, God heard my prayer. Okay, God heard my prayer, and he probably went, silly little girl. But... The man of God came over, and I heard the Lord. He put his hand on my head, and this is what I heard. He said, God has given you your request. This was on a Monday, and this is what I heard. Before this week's out, you will own your own company. So that was on Monday. I went home from that Bible study, and I told my kids, pack. I called my mother and told her I was moving. I told all the 30 people that worked for me, I'm moving. Where are you moving to? I don't know. But we're, I'm leaving real soon. Not knowing anything. So I go to this meeting and that Friday. And uh, the, this company that I had, you had to wait for somebody to die or retire because it was a million dollars of money that people made. So you had, to, you had to be in the top 10 in the nation to even get the position. You had to prove. And, and what happened is as I kept giving, I kept getting more salespeople and more salespeople. And, the, and it was like the people doubled. The people kept doubling, doubling, doubling. And if I went from like 20 people to almost 100 people, and now that's what, why the checks got bigger and bigger, have more people. But I didn't know any of that. I didn't, didn't figure it out. Uh, I didn't even know what was happening. So anyway, I fly to Utah. Now, the, more, the head of the guy uh, for the United States is Mormon, and the head of the worldwide for this corporation is Jewish. So I got a Mormon and a Jew. Okay, you got it? And so they, they called me into the special meeting and said, you've been in the top 10 for the last two years now. Uh, well, it's actually almost, I was still up there real high, but when I accepted Jesus, it went from here poof, like that. And so you qualify now for this franchise. We want you to, and they opened a map, and they said, we want you to, there's somebody that's sick, dying of cancer, so they, they're giving up their distributorship. It's, it's in Kennewick, Pasco, Richmond, Washington. So we want you to go up and check out the area 
and see if you want to take this franchise. I said, I'll take it. They go, nobody does that. I said, well, I want to ask you a question. Is there another opening between now, or it's Friday, and Monday? And they go, no, these only come up once every three, four years. And I said, well, God told me a couple of days ago that I'd own my own company by Monday, so if there's no other openings, I'll take it. And they go, sight unseen? I went, uh-huh, God said. Now, they both looked at me like I was wacko. And then they said, you have to pay 218000 for the inventory, and you have to pay 250 to buy the franchise. And I looked at them and said, I don't have any money. They went in the other room, talked for a while, and came back and said, we have no idea why we're doing this. But we're going to let you take the franchise. You have seven years to pay us back, interest-free. Seven years. Seven years, are you hearing? On the seventh year, I was ready to make my last payment to them, and God told me to give up the ministry and go into full-time ministry. That all happened because I know, learned how to give. Now, my husband always says, your blessing starts when you do tithe over. So on that note, I'm going to let you all go. Do not put your tithe in that basket, but pray. Because I believe that if you're going to walk in the supernatural, you need to pray and say, how much should I give? And if you haven't paid for your book or you have money for the book, or if you don't have money for the book, just do whatever God tells you to do. So I want to thank you all. Pastor, do you want to say anything tonight? And tomorrow we're going to have a blowout because you know what church services are like. During, I just want to share this really quick because I felt like there was a word of instruction for us and an encouragement. But during worship, I, I didn't see it with my eyes, but I sure felt it in the spirit that this, uh, that this room was getting filled with angels. And it just kept coming in and coming in and coming in. And, uh, and, and the, the Lord was showing me that anytime we decide to come into an appointment with the miraculous and the supernatural, he, uh, he provides angels, okay? He assigns and provides angels to partner with us and carry out the work, okay? And so the Lord wants, this is the encouragement from the Lord, okay? If you decide to go into Walmart with an appointment in mind, you, you are, you're, you're going shopping, but you have an appointment in mind, there's already angels that are assigned to, to assist and partner with you to carry out that ministry. So a lot of times we think, well, I can't do it if it's just me. Let's, let's, let's actually understand that it's not just you. <laughs> so there, there's actually angelic hosts that the Lord's assigning. Uh, and and uh, just recently I shared the story from anybody ever heard of Gary Oates? He wrote a book about angels and had a ministry that he partnered. He and his wife partnered with angels a lot. But the way it got started was he went to a Catherine Coleman meeting in the L.A. Coliseum, and he lived in Santa Barbara. And so he went down there, saw everything that was happening. She'd call something out. Somebody would get healed. Boom, boom, boom. It just kept happening all around the room. He went back home, and the next day he wanted to stop into the uh, bookstore that's in town there and get a book he was looking for. He went to the spirituality religion section of the, of the bookstore. And, and uh, when he did, uh, there's a guy there who said, you were at the Catherine Coleman meetings, weren't you? And he goes, yes. Ha. He had no idea how this guy knew. He goes, oh, yeah, you know, I went there too. I worship Satan. But I, I went there, and, and, and what did you think? There was angels lining. Did you see all those angels? They were lining the room, and every time she called something out, they'd come flying off the wall, hit that person, and go back to where they were, waiting for the next assignment. And, and Gary was like, oh, yeah. I saw it, yeah. <laughs> and so that actually began his journey of asking the Lord, help me understand angels. Help me understand moving and partnering with them like 
Catherine Coleman does. Help me to, to step into this. So he started, and just out of desire in his heart, the Lord started showing him and opening his eyes, and they began to minister with angels on a regular basis. They'd see an angel, uh, uh, like, go back, and they'd touch, the angel would be touching somebody on their head, and then they'd go back and do the same thing they saw the angel doing, and that person would get miraculously healed at that, at that moment. They'd see an angel blowing on somebody. They'd go and they'd blow on them, and that person would get healed at that moment. So the Lord wants us to understand the, the, the cooperation, the partnership of heaven and earth together. So, so what appointments do you want to step into in your home? in your neighborhood, at work, in your business, you know. So let's, let's go with an expectation because th this is a shift. That you've been talking about it, and I've, and, I, and I've been preaching on it on Sunday mornings. It's a, it's a time of shift where we are operating differently. And so the Lord wants, this is an equipping right here. This is an equipping. This whole night has been an equipping. And this is, this is to go and do likewise. So, I love you. I'm so excited to keep going with you. And I'm thankful for you, Joan, being here. So, yes, two more sessions tomorrow morning during the service at 10 and then tomorrow night at 6.30, okay? All right. If you've only missed two, go sign up so we can have your certificates. And you'll have beautiful certificates to put on your wall that you completed School of Supernatural. All right. Amen. All right. Bless you. Bless you.